we're going to work on a technique I call the candy bracelet, or I also call it smelling the wrist. And this comes from seeing students hanging out in the upper half of the bow and not able to get below a certain point in the bow. And the reason that's happening is because we've got a stiff wrist. So it's very hard to get past a certain point in the bow when we're not allowing our wrist to come up and lead the upstroke. So I call this candy bracelet because what we're gonna do, part one, is we're gonna take and just do this motion in the air with your bow hand, bending at the wrist and coming all the way up to your nose. Literally touch your nose and smell it. And so I like to pretend that I've got candy and here I actually have a bracelet on so you can see it's kind of looks like it's made of hard candy. So put a bracelet on or just imagine, you know, it's made of Skittles or chocolate or some kind of good perfume, whatever you want to, that's fun and that makes you look forward to smelling it. And then you're going to smell your wrist and do this 20 times. You can also do some breathing while you do this. Just relax your arm, move it like seaweed. And on the, every upstroke, you're concentrating on bringing that wrist up to your nose. I'm not doing this to bring my wrist up to my nose. My elbow is staying relaxed. My arm is staying relaxed. And it's a very sort of dangly position like this. Okay. So imagine you've got something on your wrist. You're smelling it each upstroke. And after you've gotten some comfort with that, then you're going to take your bow and put it on your shoulder. And now same thing on every upstroke, we're going to bring our wrist all the way to our nose. And this is going to feel awkward and exaggerated at first. And your bow may fall off your shoulder like this. That's okay. Just put it back on. Don't be tempted to grip the bow too hard or to try to overly control it. Your body will get used to this. Just trust that if you keep doing it, you will learn to lead every stroke with this upward wrist motion. And again, breathing on the upstroke will help you relax your body and relax your arm into this stroke every upstroke. Then we are going to take our violin and do it on the open string. And here you're trying to go all the way to the frog and arrive here at this position with your wrist bent. Now I notice my wrist is not actually touching my nose. I mean, I could touch it if you want, uh, but you don't have to do that degree of bend when you're actually playing on the string. But it's going to feel exaggerated like that, and I want you to exaggerate it the first time. As with the uh, bowing on the shoulder, you may feel like your bow is sliding out of your hand, sliding up and down the string at first. Be patient. That will correct itself as you go. So let's just do a few strokes now on the A string. candy bracelet every upstroke. This is really going to help you with facility in the lower half of the bow and on the change between the up bow and the down bow. Okay. And notice I, I can also air bow above my strings. It's another good way to practice this. Don't be tempted that once you've done this uh, one time or one day that it's fixed. It's amazing how when people think they've got this down, then they revert back to this sort of stiff wrist position, which it doesn't allow you to go above, go below this point in the bow. So if you find you're hanging out in the upper half again, you can get so much more out of your bow stroke if you can let your wrist bend on the upstroke. So concentrate on every upstroke doing a major scale. I like to do G major scale and the G major tonalization in book two. And good pieces to practice for this are ones with long notes, um, like this uh, long, long ago, or uh, this is a good one too, uh, I'll Come Little Children with the beginning stroke as an upstroke. Every up bow, thinking about smelling the wrist. Book two, the first piece, chorus. I want you to be able to use the entire
entire bow tip to frog on that piece to make it nice and majestic and a full tone. And to do that, we have to get this wrist motion going. Another good piece, waltz. Making yourself play that slow enough and also using the whole bow on every one of those notes will make that so much sweeter, so much more melodic, so much more singing. So remember, let's try to integrate this into your practicing so that once you go to play on the violin, you have this wrist position more solidly in your grasp. And if you'll do this daily, you'll be amazed at, at how much more sound you can get out of your violin and how much more of a relaxed uh, player and a relaxed bow arm you'll have. Thanks for watching, and you can find more practice tips at edwardsviolinstudio.com, or you can find more downloads and more resources by going to the Resources tab at the top menu, uh, or you can go to edwardsviolinstudio.com slash downloads.